Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you here this morning. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Now, I want all the fathers to stand. We've got, uh, we've got a bunch up here. Look at there. All our dads, stand up where you are. We want to recognize you. Dads. Nice. All right, stay standing. Stay standing just for a little bit. I'm gonna let Brandon talk for just a second, but dads keep standing, Brandon. So, what about these guys up here, huh? Woo! Now, some of y'all, y'all made, may need a sign. We talked to a gentleman this morning who said, well, I really need a sign from God. So here it is, right here. This is your sign to come join us, be up there a part of the leadership of the worship this morning. And uh, another young person said, said, well, you know, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but we got you a bucket so the theme is make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands and uh we want you to come join us and uh i think we got some guys up there that are pecking a couple of y'all out and so anyway come join us we'll cram up there it'll be good all right good. so guys here's your chance you're standing already come on up <laughs> fill up the choir loft whoever's sitting beside you push them push them out the aisle come on up we need all the guys up here. We want to pack it out. We want to pack it out because this is your special day. And so uh, we want you to sing to us. Uh, never quite understood that. But thank you, guys. Rest of you. Well, they're, they're up here. All right. You can be seated. Make room. Make room. All right. So while they're getting settled, I want to tell you about a couple of things. All right. One. A lot of chatter going on. <laughs> nice job, guys. All right. So this past week we had a team that served the Lord well and represented our church well in Hamas Springs, New Mexico. Uh, most of the team got back yesterday at different parts of the day. It was a super great week from what I've seen and what I've heard. And so we are grateful for them going and sharing the love of Christ with uh, the people there in Hamas Springs and, and Hamas Mountain Baptist Church. Now we're working on a plan uh, to have some mission reports and you're gonna hear more about that, but it'll probably be in July. So just be prepared. We're gonna have a special time for everyone to share. Now this coming week, starting tomorrow, our youth are gonna be involved in a mission week and they're gonna be serving right here in Cleburne. They're gonna be working with Christmas in Action, CIA, they're going to be working on people's homes, and it's going to be a great time. So all of our youth, 6th through 12th grade, Miss Carrie, Miss Jocelyn, the other youth leaders, they'll give you the information, but plan on being here this week for Youth Missions Week. And then uh, in July, we have a Children's Discipleship Missions Day Camp. And so they will be here at the church, and they'll be doing some mission projects and learning about missions and so it's a great thing. Can you figure out already that we are about missions? 
we think missions are so important uh, because many of you uh, came to know the Lord either through Vacation Bible School or maybe you were unchurched until somebody stopped you and talked to you about Jesus. And so that's what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to serve our Lord well, and we have more mission trips coming up, and we'll share those later as well. So this morning, the Holdridge family, they are on vacation. They are on vacation, and they deserve to be gone. And so um, I have a lengthy bio to read for our guest preacher today. Um, just kidding. It's Danny Crosby. Where's Danny? He's in the choir. He's in the choir. Yeah, thought he would be. Dr. Dano is back, and, uh, and in case you're new and you don't know who Danny is, Danny served as pastor here from 1997 until 2021, just a couple of years ago, before he retired. And so we're glad to have him back to fill in for Cliff, and uh, we look forward to hearing from him in a little bit, but he really needs no introduction. So we're so glad to have Danny, and they packed a pew this morning uh, with, with children and grandchildren, so be sure you speak to them uh, this morning. So, so we're going to turn it over to Brandon. It's up to you, buddy. Thank you, Chris. All right. I want to read from 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14. It says, Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. And you guys are doing that. You men, any boy in this room, that's, that's what we've got to do. I nicknamed that verse this morning the Tim Allen verse of the Bible. Y'all know home improvement, right? <laughs> Be strong, act like men, do everything in love. And that is what God has called us to do. And I know some of you are doing everything in love because I know y'all wouldn't be up there otherwise. So y'all are doing it because you love Jesus. Ain't that good? I'm going to read, and I thank you for being up there. We need men today, don't we? We need men to lead. We need men to set the example. And that's what we got to do. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to preach, that's Danny's job, but I'm going to share one more scripture about what you guys are doing in this loft today, what we are doing before the word of God goes out. Second Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat led the people. I will uh, not do the whole story, but I'll just tell you the result. In verse 21, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army and said give thanks to the lord for his loving kindness is everlasting when they began singing and praising the lord set ambushes against the sons of ammon moab mount seir who had come against judah so they were rooted would you pray with me Lord God, here we are to praise you. And we thank you that your word tells us when we praise you, you are sending out ambushes against the enemy. And Lord, every one of us is being attacked by the enemy every day. Wants to discourage us, wants to isolate us, wants to lie to us, wants us to lie to those we love so that we will be isolated. But Lord, and anything else that's troubling us, God, you are sending out an ambush as we praise your name to defeat the enemy. And I pray for the defeat of the enemy in every one of our lives today. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Would you stand with us as we sing? Praise the Lord. His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. One mission, all-knowing, He counts not their sum. 
thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness through every morn, our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience would wait as we constantly know? What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is born. Stronger than darkness, blue every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is born. What riches of kindness He lavished on us. What blood was the payment, His life was the cost. We stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Y'all are doing great. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, you every morn. They are many, His mercy is more. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is These are the days of Elijah. Let's go. These are the days of Elijah. Listen to that. Woo! These are the days of your servant Moses. Righteousness be restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and out of Zion till salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in your world, and we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Aren't y'all glad there's no God like Jehovah? Amen? Let's sing it. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 
There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. And the trumpets call in your voice. It's a year of jubilee and out of dying till salvation comes. Behold, He comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Remain standing. I'll be brief. Uh, I just forgot that we do scripture and prayer. I'm Cliff's usually up here. But I thought this morning uh, it would be fitting to share a, an old great hymn. Rise up, O men of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O men of God, the kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and end the night of wrong. Rise up, O men of God, the church for you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod. As brothers of the Son of Man, rise up, O men of God. Great encouragement. There is no doubt what our men should be doing. And I pray that the Lord will strengthen us to do the task at hand. Let's pray this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness. And dear Lord, we thank you for all of our men, for all of our dads. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for their legacy that they leave for us. And dear Lord, we know that in many instances that maybe the dads did not hold up their end of the deal or... They did not lead well in their homes, but dear Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. And dear Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us, that you'll give us the, the, the strength and the, the uh, boldness to stand for you each and every day, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we thank you and we pray these things in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen. never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend i will live in the goodness of All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With 
with every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing that bridge again. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrender now, I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. the goodness of God. One more time. Faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see I will see of the goodness of God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. children miss debbie and her helpers are ready for you if you're ready to go to children's church you can go with her 
Wonderful. Amen. Well, it's good to be here. It's really good to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. I love your pastor, and uh, what a great thing that he can get away with his family and have a little time with them. That's good. Thank you for your prayers for Diane. She has about four and a half more months of chemo pills, two weeks on, one week off, and... Um, as well as Keytruda, an experimental kind of thing that's supposed to keep cancer from hiding. But God's been good, and we just appreciate your prayers for her. And uh, we believe that God's going to bring full healing in her life. Tomorrow is Juneteenth. Juneteenth is an important date in Texas. It was two years after Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that the slaves in Texas actually were set free under force, basically. And uh, what a tragedy that those two years after they were declared free, um, they didn't have their freedom. So it's a great celebration and we want freedom for everyone, everywhere, in all circumstances. We want people to be free. We don't want anyone to be slaves. And we realize there are still slaves today. And uh, that's a terrible truth. I'm thankful for the freedom that we have in Jesus. And the freedom we have to pray for freedom for all people. And to work for it every way we can. So tomorrow's Juneteenth. Tomorrow is also another very important day. Brandon Treadway turns a year older. <laughs> Happy birthday, brother. When they got the bucket out, I thought they were going to pass it for an offering for his birthday. You know, I didn't know. You never know what's coming up with those two. But I am so excited he's back here, and uh, man, what a wonderful brother and friend in the Lord, and uh, happy birthday. How old are you going to be? 48. 48. How about that? Some of us don't even remember 48. I'm happy for you. Man, it's good to be back. I want to preach today on something that everybody needs and that a lot of people don't have. And as I thought about Father's Day, we dads ought to lead out in helping our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren have this in their life. I want to preach on hope. Hope. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, now abide faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And you need love and you need faith, but my goodness, you need hope. Everybody needs hope. People are dying for hope. Nearly every family has been affected in some way by people who have lost all hope. And the statistics are staggering about those people who've lost hope and taken their life. Suicide rates increased 36% between 2000 and 2021. That's over a third. It was responsible for 48,183 deaths in 2021 in the U.S., which is about one death every 11 minutes. Somebody who loses hope and takes their life. The number of people who think about or attempt suicide is even higher. In 2021, an estimated 12.3 million American adults seriously thought about suicide. Three and a half million planned a suicide attempt, and 1.7 million attempted suicide. It affects people of all ages. 
In 2021, it was the top nine leading cause of death for people ages 10 through 64. But listen to this. In 2021, suicide was the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 14. Think about that. Those kids. And it was also the second leading cause of death for people 20 to 34. Those people coming out of high school, coming out of college, trying to start a career, trying to start a family. Man, people need hope. And those statistics are staggering, but everybody needs hope. Even those who are not suicidal or restless, lonely, purposeless, listless, hurting. People everywhere need hope. Maybe today you're here and you're you're really short on hope. I want to tell you there is hope for you. There is hope for this world. There is hope for our nation. And I want to tell you where that hope is. Stand with me out of reverence for the word of God, the ultimate truth of the universe, which reveals the ultimate reality of the universe, who is Jesus Christ And let's read from 1 Peter chapter 1, and I hope you'll keep your Bible open as we look through these nine verses at the beginning of 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. Now, did you just notice that in one verse, Peter mentions the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Our God is three in one. Nobody else is. Nobody else comes close to that kind of existence, that kind of ontology, that kind of reality. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he says. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise Glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for the gift of faith. And I pray today that your hope would pour over this place by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, if anyone here doesn't have hope, I pray your Holy Spirit would help them to know there's hope. We don't have to live under the penalty of our sin. We don't have to live in the unforgiveness of our brokenness, Lord. There is hope for forgiveness There's hope for eternal life. There's hope for new life, new birth. And Lord, for your people who maybe are struggling, suffering in grief and in trial, like these people to whom Peter wrote this letter, I pray your Holy Spirit would bring hope to their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and be seated. Peter talks about the foundation of this living hope, the foundation of it. 
And he starts with his own name, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And you know Peter. I mean, Peter's sort of the leader of the disciples. He's the guy who actually asked Jesus to let him get out of the boat and walk on water to Jesus. And I know when he saw the waves, his faith faltered and he started sinking. But you know, the other 11 guys were still in the boat. Peter was out there. I like Peter. He was speaking. He always talked before he thought. I think I kind of relate to him in that sometimes. Words get out before my mind has time to filter them sometimes. The older I get, the worse it is. But Peter was a man of action. And he's writing, it says, to the elect exiles. I want you to think about that phrase. Elect means chosen. Elect. Chosen by God, yet exiles. He's writing to those who were dispersed out of Judah and out of Israel because of their faith in Jesus Christ their obedience to the way of Jesus, and when persecution got bad, they left friends, they left family, they left their belongings, they left their homes, and they scattered and were exiled from their country. Think of that. Elect and exile. Now, the New Testament church did not consider suffering to be an odd thing. They were close enough to the crucifixion of Jesus and the suffering of the Lord that they identified their suffering as being part of his suffering and part of what it cost to follow Jesus. And so being elect exiles didn't burn them out, didn't turn them away from Jesus. They still believed. And Peter writes to encourage them. Now, how does he encourage them? Well, he tells them first, your elect exile experience is according to the foreknowledge of God. Now, isn't that comforting? God knew it was coming. One of the wonderful comforts about any kind of suffering is that it didn't surprise God. God knew it was coming. In fact, I believe as you look back, you'll see that God was preparing you for it for a long time. Peter wants them to know your, your exile is not something that just happened because of a broken world. It's not something that just happened because of the harshness of people against the Lord Jesus. It happened and God knew it was going to happen. And he didn't stop it. Now the older I get, I have more and more questions about all of that. Lord, if you knew it was coming and you could have stopped it, why didn't you? You ever wondered that? Oh, shut up. Yes, you have. <laughs> don't sit there and be all pious on me. We've wondered that. I don't have an answer except God is always good. God is always loving and kind. And one day when we will get to heaven, I think we're going to walk in and take one look and go, oh, I think we'll get it. But we don't get it here. So Peter wants these elect exiles chosen by God, yet suffering to know God knows your situation. And then he says, by the sanctification of the Spirit, you were set aside by the Spirit for this suffering. Wow, now there's something that'll turn your card upside down. You were set aside by the Spirit for this suffering. Doesn't make the suffering good, but it does make God good. It means the Holy Spirit gives us grace sufficient for whatever comes. Hallelujah. I can have hope in the worst of circumstances. I can have hope in the face of death and sickness and sorrow and suffering because the Holy Spirit empowers me. 
and he empowers you. And you're in this elect exile, Peter says, <coughs> for your obedience to Jesus Christ. For your obedience to Jesus Christ. If they had turned their back on Christ, they could have stayed where they were. But they counted being with Jesus and following him as more important than staying home, keeping the things they had, not suffering. They counted obedience to Jesus as their highest value. And so do we. So do we. And for the sprinkling with his blood. Now, I think he has a double meaning about sprinkling with his blood in this phrase. Because we receive salvation because of the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus that brings forgiveness for our sins. And I think he wants them to re be reminded of that. It was the blood of Jesus that was the price of our redemption, the price of our salvation. But the sprinkling with his blood also relates to the suffering that they're enduring. The grief, the sorrow, the persecution, the agony that they're walking through is a sprinkling with his blood. It's a sharing in the sufferings of Jesus. And oh, as believers, we have got to reorder our view of the suffering in this world and understand it as a participation in his suffering. If they hated him, he said, they'll hate you too. Do you remember that? And then Peter says to them, grace and peace, may it be multiplied to you. And boy, do we need that, don't we? We need God's grace, the power, and the desire to do his will every day. We need his peace, that wholeness of life that comes only through knowing Jesus. Everybody needs that. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants them to know that all that follows ought to bring praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, in his great mercy, look at that. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth. We have all we have in Jesus and in this world by the mercy of God. God's mercy, mercy means it's not because of my worthiness, it's not because of my works, it's not because of my goodness, it's because God is merciful. He's kind. I don't want what I deserve, people. I've read the book. It tells me what I deserve. Don't want that. Sure don't want what I've earned. I want the mercy of God. Mercy. Now, we live in a world where every advertiser tries to tell you, you deserve whatever it is they're selling. McDonald's used to have that thing, you deserve a break today. Remember that? Come on, I'm not that old, am I? <laughs> you deserve a break today. No, you don't. It's a gift of God's mercy if you get a break. And gratitude ought to flow from our hearts for the mercy of God all the time because we do not get what we deserve. <laughs> Hallelujah. We receive the mercy of God every day. His mercies are new every morning. When you got up this morning, new mercies. Hallelujah. When you had that fight with the family on the way to church this morning, new mercies. I remember. By his mercy, he has given us new birth. You've been born again. New birth. Literally, he birthed us again. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 3, Truly, truly, I tell you that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Listen, going to heaven is not a matter of coming to church, trying to be a good person, trying to treat people right. Being a Christian is a part of the new birth. That's how you get here. You have to be born again. You have to repent of sins. You have to turn from sin and receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That's how you come into the kingdom of God, the new birth. And we've been born again into this living hope, a hope that's alive, a hope that is a living reality in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not something dead, not something static. It's a dynamic growing living thing peter likes this living reality in his book <coughs> in chapter 1 verse 23 he says since you've been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of god the word of God is alive. In First Peter 2, 4 and 5, he says, As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a, spirit, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We're made alive. And God's building us into something. He's building this church into something. And oh, what a rich history you have, but what a rich future you have by the grace of God and the mercy of God. God's building something here. In chapter 2, verse 24, he says, Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. We're dead to sin, we're alive to righteousness by the grace of God. And then in chapter 4, verse 5, he says, They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So for Peter, he understands there are some people who are still dead in their sins, and there are some people who are alive in Jesus. And if you're alive in Jesus by the new birth, then you have this living hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now the Pharisees cherished the hope of resurrection, but Jesus, by his resurrection, gave it proof and permanence. He brought that hope to life. You remember when Paul was arrested in Jerusalem and he was drugged before the Sanhedrin, the ruling council, which was made up of Sadducees and Pharisees, he said to them, when he saw that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Brothers, I'm a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. In 1 Corinthians 15, 14, Paul wrote that whole chapter about the resurrection of Jesus and how important it is, how critical it is in history. It is the turning point of history. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is vain and your faith is in vain. But he goes on to say, but Christ is risen. And it's by the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we have this living hope. Hope rose up with Christ from the dead, from the grave. Peter and the other disciples were slow to believe it. until Jesus appeared to them. Apart from Christ, humanity has no hope. Oh, you can hope for a new TV or hope a relationship works out, but we have no hope in view of our coming death and eternity which follows apart from Jesus Christ. We can have points of hope, but they all soon fade away. And nobody takes anything with them out of this world except the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's our only hope. He's our only hope. And he gives la lasting hope and eternal hope for us. So here this morning, do you have that eternal hope? Do you know that when you die, heaven awaits? Your last breath here, your first breath there. What an assurance 
for your heart to have. Listen, everybody needs that hope. Everybody needs that living hope that they have because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a promise of eternity. This service of praise and worship to the Lord Jesus flows from the hope that we have in us, this living hope. And the triune God is the foundation of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Peter talks about the future of living hope. The future of it. He says in verse 4, we've been born again into this living hope and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Do you know that you have an inheritance? Hallelujah. You have an inheritance. In Galatians 3, Paul talks about this inheritance. He says, if the inheritance comes by the law, that is by obedience and works, then it no longer comes by a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. We have an inheritance that doesn't come because we earn it or deserve it. We have an inheritance that is ours because of the promise of God. And he says it is imperishable. It can never perish, never spoil, never fade. You know any other inheritance that is like that? How many inheritances on earth are wasted and disappear? <clears throat> this inheritance will never perish, spoil, or fade. It is certain. It is there. It is yours. Nothing and nobody can touch it. And there's no defect of any kind, nor will there ever be in it. James writes about this life in James 1, 11. He says, The sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Here on earth, fortunes perish. And so do those who work so hard to accumulate them. And they leave it all to people who are going to squander it. There, there's no death and no end to the fortune we have. It's kept in heaven, Peter says. He uses a tense here that says, your name was stamped on it when you believed, and your name will never be taken off of it. It has your stamp on it. It is kept in heaven for you. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, 19, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. <coughs> I want you to notice that Jesus does not scandalize or in any way impugn the laying up of treasure. In fact, he encourages it. But he encourages us to lay up a different kind of treasure than the world works for and the world cherishes. Lay up treasure in heaven. We have an inheritance there. And then Peter goes on as if he hasn't already said it's yours enough and says it is shielded, guarded by God's dynamite power. It's kept for you. It guards. It guards its place in heaven for eternity for you. God's power keeps it there. Nothing can remove it. Nothing can take it away. He uses the same word as he does in Philippians 4, 7 here where he says, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that treasure is guarded in heaven for you and until your salvation is fully revealed. 
We have salvation, but not in its fullness because we can't experience its fullness here. Paul says in Romans 8, 18, I, can suffering, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. So what's going on here doesn't even compare. It's not even in the same category as what's going to happen there. In Colossians 3, he says, when Christ, who is your life, appear, you also will appear with him in glory. Now, this living hope is not a new thing, and in fact, you've been singing about it since you were a kid. So stand up with me, and we're going to sing about it in a song you're going to know from when you were a kid. I do this mainly because some of you are looking sleepy out there. <laughs> but also, I want to sing the first verse of Do Lord, okay? I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. Thank you. Give yourselves a hand. Good job. We've been singing about this inheritance since we were kids. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. How secure is your future? Do you know that you have an inheritance in heaven? Do you know that you have a home in heaven? Do you know that whatever happens here, if the worst in the world happens, you're going to the best place ever? Today's Father's Day. My dad died in 2011. I still say he's having his best day ever because there's no night there. It's just day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe that by faith. We have that inheritance laid up for us by the mercy of God. Hallelujah. So the foundation of living hope is the Lord God himself. The future is secure. And then look at the faith of living hope. The faith. Because hope and faith are closely related. He says in verse 6, in this suffering you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. One of the things about this life is everybody suffers. Maybe not in the same degree, maybe not in the same way, everybody suffers. And maybe right now you're in a time of suffering. It comes to all of us, whoever you are. Peter recognizes that. You rejoice, though, though now you've had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These come so that your faith of greater worth than gold. Do you know that your faith is worth more than the most precious metal we have on earth? Faith. Paul warns Timothy, don't let your faith get shipwrecked. We live in a day where a lot of people's faith is getting shipwrecked by this world and by its philosophies. And, its, and listen, these things are not new, people. They've been going on for centuries. Don't let your faith be shipwrecked. Your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of of your souls in these last days some people are fretting others are despairing many are depressed and longing for the good old days many are fearful many are hopeless what are we the people of god doing we are rejoicing Amen. rejoicing because our life 
is not about all this stuff and it's not about this world and it's not about this culture. Our life is tied up in the Lord Jesus. And as Peter writes to people and churches that are being persecuted, he says, this is all temporary. But our permanent outlook as the people of God is rejoicing. That's what drives the world batty, by the way, about us. They don't understand it. Jesus talked about it in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 11, and 12. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I'm here to tell you today, Scripture never does anything but face the reality that suffering happens. It doesn't try to talk its way out of it. It doesn't try to act like it's not so bad. It doesn't try to act like suffering's not real. It faces it honestly, but never from an earthly perspective. And as people of God, we've got to get a new perspective about our sorrow and our grief and our suffering. Everybody experiences some of it. And as Jesus' people, we've got to keep this heavenly perspective on our persecutions and sufferings and troubles. They're temporary. Jesus is eternal. Our outlook is joy. Paul speaks this eternal perspective on our ministry and service in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. He said, we're treated as impostors, and yet we're true. As unknown and yet well-known. As dying, and behold, we live. As punished and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing everything and James points to this joy as well in James 1 2 count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness trials prove our faith to be genuine in this living hope because of Jesus Christ Trials prove that this faith is of greater worth than gold. It stands the test of fire better than gold. And it's refined by the trials and the sufferings that burn into our lives. James 2.17 says, Faith by itself, if it doesn't have works, is dead. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead in James 2.26, so also faith apart from works is dead. Trials result in praise, glory, and honor to the Lord Jesus when he's revealed at the end of time. We love Jesus whom we have not seen. We believe in Jesus whom we have not seen. And those unseen realities are more real than the ones we see because they last longer. They're much more valuable. They're much more important than all this stuff around us. So we rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy in Jesus, whom we've never seen. Unutterable, indescribable, glorious joy. By faith we believe we shall see him at the end in all of his glory. You remember Thomas was not there the first night Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. And Thomas said, unless I put my finger into his hands and my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe. And Jesus showed up the next Sunday evening and his disciples were gathered and Thomas was present. And Jesus says in John 20, 29, Thomas, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. People, this is our stance of faith. We haven't seen, but oh, we believe. We, these are not realities you can touch and feel and hold on to physically, and yet they're real, they're more real. And we hold on to them by faith. Jesus lives. Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 4, when the chief shepherd 
appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Our salvation is already ours, but not yet in its fullness, not yet in its completeness. The Bible says we have a foretaste, a down payment by the Holy Spirit of the fullness that will be revealed in heaven for us. So hold on to faith. My dad often told me and all 13 of his kids, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And maybe today you need a renewal of trust in the Lord. Do you trust him? Do you have this living hope by faith? If you know Jesus and this living hope, are you living today on the foundation of its truth? Are you living for the inheritance that is to come? Are you living by faith in the Lord Jesus, who is our living hope? Let's bow together and pray as the band comes. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, our living hope. I pray, Lord, for anyone who's running short on hope today that your Holy Spirit would ignite hope in their heart, joy in their heart. Lord, not that the suffering, the hardship, whatever it is they're going through is not real, but Lord, the things of heaven, the things of eternity, the spiritual things of Jesus are more vital and more real than the suffering they're enduring. So Lord, may we rejoice in you today. And Lord, I pray that we would be people of hope who spread hope around to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together as we sing. The altar's open. Chris will be here, and I'll be here. Love to pray with you if you need something. If God speaks, he always tells the truth. And when he speaks, it's always the right time to do what he says. So we want to invite you to do that. As we say, more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. Oh, he is able, more than able to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what He Sing it again with me. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. Oh, He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make Sing it one more time. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make
Amen. Just before Chris comes to close us, I just want to tell you, we're so grateful for this church. We miss you all. Uh, we're having a great time in our retirement. I have preached an interim pastorate. I've, I'm preaching at different churches. I get to play bass sometimes in the band of the church we are going to. And uh, we do doctor's visits and go to funerals. I've done quite a few funerals for people who knew us a long time ago uh, before we moved back to the Gatesville area. But uh, we are so grateful for you and grateful for this church. And um, we just pray God will continue to bring great hope and do great things here. And we pray for your pastor and his family. Uh, what a wonderful friend Cliff is. So thank you again for this opportunity to be here. And uh, it's great to see you all. Chris? It is always good to have you back, no matter what the circumstance, but I'm glad that you were able to preach this morning. So, uh, but it's good to see all of you as well. Uh, I, just something I didn't mention, we, we installed new carpet up here this week. Um, if you'll remember back uh, the day before Easter, we had water everywhere. And so uh, insurance is still working on this, but we, we were able to get everything kind of matched up close as we could, but uh, we we're very grateful to have it kind of back in order up here at the front. And uh, we have a wedding this coming weekend, so just in time. Uh, I was wondering, if she had never seen the bare wood. She saw the sanctuary, it's not a church member. Uh, she saw the sanctuary a month or so ago, or, or before Easter. And uh, so I asked Donna, does she know about the carpet? No, she doesn't know about the carpet. Nobody has to tell her now because it's all fixed. So we're very grateful. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Dear Lord, we do thank you for your goodness, your kindness. We thank you for this great message that we've heard. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll just in, in, give us strength and boldness to share your love with those we come in contact with. And as soon as we walk out these doors, use us in a mighty way and help us to be uh, observant of everything around us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. We love you. Have a great week. He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee. Oh, out of time.